Hi, it's Edward from Arts Connect TV. When looking back on the history of Australian music, there's very few artists over 40 years who's been consistently creative, consistently outpouring a unique brand of Australian records. One artist that comes to mind is Ed Cooper. From his early work at the Saints, emerging out of Brisbane in the late 70s, to the Laughing Clowns, to his solo career, soundtrack work, and more recently playing guitar with Nick Cave. And today we're here to have a chat with Ed Cooper. Good evening, how are you going? I'm, I'm pretty good, thanks, how are you? You're crook, you've got a bit of a flu. I, I, I have, but I'm, I'm the show goes so, so, soldiering on manfully. All right. I was going to um, start off with Brisbane, but I thought, let's go to tomorrow's parties, because I went along with the thousands of other people, and um, it really was amazing to see the reformation of the Laughing Clouds, the reformation of the Saints in the same bill. Can you tell me how that all started? I guess, you know, like with the Clowns, there was that, um, that compilation that I did uh, some years ago now, uh, Cruel But Fair, which was sort of a complete um, collection of all the studio recordings that we did. And I think that that generated a little bit of interest in the band that kind of been a bit forgotten. Well, out of those shows you were asked to play with uh, Nick Cave. Can you tell me how that's come about and how you found being back being the guitar player in a band? Well, I'm often the guitar player in a band. <laughs> but, um, oh, look, that, that, it was great. It was, uh, you know, um, it was a bit of a surprise. Um, and it's, it's sort of a different approach because obviously, you know, it's not a band that I formed or anything. Mm -hmm, so coming in and kind of playing other people's, someone else's material um, is, it's, it creates a different sort of dynamic and I found it sort of really interesting, I found it really, you know, quite inspiring in a lot of ways and um, I think, I think I sort of even learned some things from the whole process so that's, it was a beneficial kind of thing for me personally to do with, on a number of different levels. Do you think Growing up, Brisbane had impact on your music. And I know I'm Stranded really was a statement for the band, but I'd maybe get you to explain. Look, what, one thing that I have to emphasise is that I would have been making music wherever I was living, wherever I was growing up. Mm -hmm. To kind of say that the music of the band or the music that I was writing was sort of a direct response to that or a, some kind of, um, you know, political statement against the Bielke peterson government is, mm -hmm. not, is not the case. It's, um, well, I mean, if anything, if it was a reaction against anything, it was probably a reaction against the kind of overly softening of you know, moving away from what I actually considered was rock and roll. Well, the Saints went to London. Um, maybe you could give us an impression how you found London as a musician. I, I was kind of a little bit surprised at how non-adventurous the actual punk scene was um, in some ways. I was a bit disappointed with that. Um, but it, it did go from being a sort of an underground thing to a f an almost sort of commercial thing in a very short period of time. And I think once it hit that sort of commercial thing, it became a pretty dull sort of uh, music form for my liking anyway. And so I started looking out for other types of music and I found tons. Mm -hmm. When I was in London, it was kind of the right time for me to discover some of the uh, avant-garde, jazz, you know, Ferro Sanders, Archie Shep, John Coltrane, all that sort of stuff. Um, I possibly could have found that in a record shop in Brisbane. I'm sure that, you know, some of that stuff was around, but it wouldn't have been the right time for me. So I think living in London kind of opened me up to wanting to move on a bit musically. And so I found, yeah, tons of stuff. You came to Sydney and you formed the Laughing Clowns. Um, 
When the band broke up, why did you choose to go onto a, a solo career completely on your own instead of what you've done before, always being involved with sort of the band's situation? Well, I think the answer probably lies in the question. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think I think I kind of had enough of bands for a period of time. I think uh, bands are, are great if everyone's kind of working towards something that's sort of common. You know, uh, it can kind of be a real pain in the ass if they're um, not. You know, if 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 there's sort of too much, and, and the clowns, at the end, unfortunately, it had kind of disintegrated. You know, it just wasn't, wasn't a thing that was working for me. There was too much sort of bitterness and resentment, and not enough kind of work being put into the art of it and mm -hmm. into what it actually takes to keep a band on the road, kind of thing. So I decided to sort of put it out of its misery in a way. You know, it was. And it was, you know, things come to an end. I mean, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing goes on forever. You know, you've got to remember, it's not as if we were making tons of money or anything. You know, it was always a struggle financially. So that was sort of another pressure that you kind of feel. But that wasn't the reason why I split the band. It was just basically no one was getting on, and it was just kind of running amok in terms of just internal, uh, you know, nonsense in a lot of ways. But um, yeah, you just sometimes you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. Finally, where, where where are you up to now? Where, what's your what's your future recording and your future plans with touring over the next few months? I'd love to do some more of this stuff with Mark Dawson. That mm -hmm. we're, we're doing some of the shows. Uh, I mean, we're we're limiting it to two albums. Um, I kind of think you know on some of the nights when we've been playing you, it just sort of strikes me the fuck there is another there is another album in this a new album mm -hmm. of this c kind of approach really I've been, I found it quite inspiring but what we're doing with Electrical Storm in this instance is kind of playing it <coughs> as if we were doing it during the original Today Wonder tour right so we're taking a Today Wonder approach to Electrical Storm and I don't know, some of it works really well, and it, uh, which is great because you know, I haven't played most of that album for, for decades, mm -hmm. so um, and as far as other things go, I'd, you know, I'd like to do that, I'd like to you know, do a new album of something else, and hopefully all that will kind of come together, but, but to sort of announce as a formal thing, it's a bit difficult, because mm -hmm. things do change, it's a... It's a very changeable business at the moment. Thanks Ed, it's been wonderful talking to you. Now we go to Ed performing live tracks from his Electrical Storm album. <laughs> Moment, and 
Even though just how you feel Well, you better believe it But I could Move it away Watching this electrical stand Look down the thoughts got us out of town I thought that it would take forever Just to leave this once out of town And I did it and I'm leaving No I'm still here in this house Watching the celebrity Watching this electrical star